Okay, so last section we're going to look at for this week, 2.6. Okay, it's on solving absolute value inequalities. Just like Mr. Rice showed you when we did absolute value equations, most of the steps are going to be the same, okay? Except there's one extra step at the end. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, you, you don't have to write this down, okay? I just want you to watch me show you where you could use what we're learning today. Okay, so we're just going to look at an example of when we could use an absolute value inequality. On the next slide, that's when you're going to start writing down the steps. Okay, so just, just watch this. All right, so let's say that um, the temperature, we're talking about the temperature at night, and it always remained within 5 degrees of zero. Okay, could be on either side. Okay, so if the temperature always stayed within 5 degrees of zero, what does that mean the coldest it could have been that night was? It has to stay within 5 degrees of zero. Antonio? Below 5. Yep. So it could have been as cold as negative 5. And what's the highest the temperature could have gotten? If it's always within 5 degrees of zero. 5 degrees. It could have been as, we'll call that warm, as positive 5. All right? So the temperatures were always basically between those two numbers. Now, Mr. Ray mentioned something about distance earlier. What's the distance that 5 is from 0? How far away is 5 from 0? Okay, 5. How far away is negative 5 from 0? It's also 5 units away. Right? And I just said it, but what was the name of that thing Mr. Roy said? It measures the distance from zero? Absolute. Absolute value. So in this problem, this is how you represent those temperatures. The distance from zero, the absolute value, is always less than or equal to five. Okay? What I just circled and what I just graphed, those are the same thing. Right, so that's an example of where you could see it. Okay? Something that's always within a certain distance from zero, like a temperature. Or like, let's say you, you, know, you weighed yourself for, for a month, you know, and you were like 200, and then you went 203, maybe 204 at the highest, maybe 196 at the lowest. You could say you were always within four pounds of 200 pounds. Right? 204 at the highest, 196 at the lowest. We could write an inequality just like that to represent what I just said. Right. Is anybody in, interested in like the machine, machine shop or anything like that? No. So sometimes when they make parts, they have what's called a tolerance. And it's very important, like especially if you're making a part for like an engine, that the part they make is very close to what it should be. Sometimes it's okay if the part comes out a little smaller. Sometimes it's okay if the part comes out just a little bigger. But it has to be within a certain tolerance, where they throw the part away because it won't, it won't work in the machine correctly. Okay? They could set up a computer with something like that built into it to basically decide whether or not the part they made is good to, to use. Right? So that's where you see this, this kind of stuff. All right, so the steps we're going to write down, okay? step one, I want you to write it but this step is always already going to be done for you. Okay, Mr. Wright and I are always going to have step one already done. Okay, so step one is to get the absolute value bars by themselves. Oh yeah, did yours say, yeah, copy where it says equal sign on yours? Change it, I forgot to change it to one of those four symbols. No, guys, so it says, it says instead of getting absolute value by itself, so it says instead, oh, no, this is right. so, after, so after the, 
after the com after the comma, you're gonna write this. All right. So because instead, because it says instead. So we're not trying to get again. We're gonna show you that look, it's similar, but we're not trying to get we're not trying to get things by themselves on one side of the equal side. We're trying to get things by themselves on one side of the inequality signs. It's a little bit different. Yeah, so this, I'm so sorry. everything at, you're going to write that, you have the comma on there, write, write everything up here after the comma. Yeah, this, this is correct, all right? So okay. instead of getting the absolute value bars by themselves on one side of the yeah. equal sign, you're going to get the absolute value bars by itself on one side of the, what do you call these four symbols? Inequality symbols, yep. Now, I'm going to put a check mark next to that because that step is always going to be done for you. Okay, and as far as what it says below it, the first and the second, on your notes where it says first and second, you could just cross out first and second. Okay, since we don't have to do this, I'm not going to get into the steps for how you would do it. Okay, so where it says first and second, we're not going to write anything down. Okay, absolutely not. Yep, just leave it out. We're going to go right to step two. Everything, 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 on, everything, on, everything, everything that's underlined, right underlines. All right, so is there any questions on what that means? So when you're looking at a problem, uh, let me just make something up. Does that fit the description for number one? Is the absolute value bars by themselves on one side? There's nothing attached to it, no plus or minus something on that side. Kyle? Is that one absolute value bars by themselves? Yes. yes. On one side even on one side of the sign, yes. Okay. So that's what you're looking for. All right. What if you had something like this? Are the absolute value bars by themselves now? No. Now you've got something extra. Okay. All right. What was the second step Mr. Roy reviewed when you're solving an absolute value equation? Take the original and do what? Yeah, Liam? Yeah, you're going to split it. Okay. So under step two, you're going to write down split it and flip it. You already got the, you already got the um, quotation marks in. It's right on the inside. <coughs> okay, so when we split it into two problems, what was, um, Mr. Wright just went over this. When you split it, and I think, Josh, you gave us the answer. What do you do when you write the first one? Yeah, you just don't write the bars. Okay, the first one is just the original inequality without the bars. So, where it says, guys, where it says they have the arrows there, you're going to write original inequality. So, original inequality. The arrows are pointing, you're going to write original inequality. And now, remember we told you there was a little, there was a little bit, there was a little bit of a, there was a little bit of a tweak, all right, when we do the second one, all right. So think back to when we did equations, absolute value equations. So the first one is exactly the same, and when we're doing inequalities, the sign's going to point in the same direction. Number after the sign's going to stay the same. The only thing that'll be different is there'll be no absolute value bars. Now. For my second inequality, think back to when we did equations. What happens? We did an absolute value equation. What needs to happen? Anybody remember? We set up that second one. Obviously, we're gonna write it. With, we're gonna write it with no bars. What were you gonna say, Josh? The, the, number has to be negative. the number at the end has to be negative. Very good. That's the same here. 
Does anybody think they might know what the li that little bit of a difference might be from doing an absolute value equation with the equal sign to an inequality? Anybody think they might know? There's one more thing we got to do. Jordy, Liam. Add a negative sign. Yeah, well, we we know that, but something else. Anybody know? Think about these directions up here. Split it and flip it. What do you think is going to happen, Josh? Flip the inequality. Exactly. When we do that second inequality, write it with no bars. Make the number at the end negative. The only thing that will change, the only difference is one more thing we have to do when we're doing, a, doing an inequality, we have to flip the sign. All right, we have to flip the sign. So we're going to flip the sign and make the number after that sign opposite. So if it's greater than, make it less than. If it's less than or equal to, make it greater than or equal to. We're flipping the sign. We should have time to try, I think, probably three, <coughs> maybe four of these today. So you'll have plenty, plenty of practice. Actually, yeah, yeah, four. I think we'll get through four. Yeah. All right. Um, everybody good with this? No. Right. So like, I said, like we said, same exact thing. We're still going to split them. We're still going to get rid of the absolute value bars. We're still going to make, in the second one, still make the number after the sign negative. Only thing is, in that second one that we set up, flip the sign. That's the only thing that's going to be different from, from an equation with the equal sign to inequality. Now, step three. We have to graph it. All right? So we're going to graph it. Now, what two types of problems did we deal with yesterday? What two types do we have? Um, Think of the words. Right, Shannon? And and or. So this is when it's going to be very important to look at the original sign in the original problem, and it's going to tell you what type of problem it's going to be. All right? So what kind of problem is it? Like we just said, we'll look at the original sign, the original inequality sign, in the original problem, and it's going to tell us. All right? So, if the original sign, all right, anyone know what kind of sign this is? Someone tell me. <coughs> it's a less than. What about this one? Less than. less than or equal to. It becomes an and problem. So those two, the two, the two inequalities you set up, they're going to be separated by the word and. The little hint, we think of less than or less than less than. I know it's kind of corny, but it's one good way to remember. Corny. So if it's, if it's less than or less than or equal to, it's going to be an and problem. When we look back at the original sign of the original problem, it's going to tell us what it is. So it'll be an and. Jordy, I look up here. What sign is that? Greater. How about this one? Greater than or equal to. So if, the, if it's a greater than or greater than or equal to, it's going to become an or. Think great or. Great or less than. That's how it works. That's a little hint if you can't remember. So that's going to tell us, whatever the original sign is, it's going to tell us what word we're going to use to separate the two inequalities. All right, I'll give you guys about 30 seconds. You don't have this all written down. Everybody good? Yes? All set? I'll leave it up there for you. I know. Now, as you guys are finishing copying that down, I'm just going to go over this. You don't have to write this down, but just remember the rules for graphing and and or. Remember, an and you want to graph the overlap, right? 
You want to graph this that little, little, little bit of an area because both, because only numbers from that range will work for solutions. Or doesn't really matter. They go in opposite direction. Usually, in most cases, for and you're gonna get the you're gonna get the little connect the dots. For or you're usually gonna go in opposite directions. Those are the kind of problems we're gonna give you guys. Another big thing when you're doing these, you're still gonna flip the sign if you're dividing by a negative. Right, you'll still flip that sign if you divide by a negative. Everyone good? Notice they're still copying a little bit more? You all set? Okay, everybody's good? Good to move on? Jordi, I know I'm just gonna ignore you. Okay, thank you. Nothing else, okay, good. Let's try one. So, we don't care about step, we don't care about step one, because step one's already done for us. As we know today, all the absolute value is going to be by itself. All right? Um, Nini, what's the first thing I got to do? Don't care about that. Remember what we said at the beginning. Don't worry about himself. Every yeah, moment we do it. Good step, right on, right on. Yeah. But we don't have to do that today. We're making a little. Separate. Nini, can you give me my first. Inequality. Okay. What's the problem going to be, though? What problem am I going to write here? Perfecto. You're done. Next thing I'm going to ask myself. I'm going to kind of actually. I'll leave a little space. I'm not going to do that right yet. Jordy, you want to give me a second one? Okay. Is that negative five? I don't know, it's five. Five minus three x greater than negative nine. I like everything except the sign. Shannon. When you're, when you're splitting it, you have to split the sign. Jordy, Shannon just gave you some really good information. When you do the second one, you have to flip the sign, flip the arrow. I said that. Huh? I said, I said flip the sign. You did? Yeah. I probably said quiet. Okay. Because you said, you said greater than. It should have been less than. To flip that. Or you, could, you couldn't have said, Mr. Roy, flip the sign. <coughs> I might have been, I'm getting old. You know what I mean? When my son cries at night, he's right in my ear, so I might be going a little bit deaf. <laughs> All right? Um, good. So we got that. So we flipped. We did... Absolute value was by itself. We flipped it. All right, we switched the sign and we flipped it. One more thing we gotta do before we can solve. Anybody know one more thing we gotta do? Oh, divide. Hey, I mean, I'm leaving. No, not yet. Mr. Hager, Mr. Hager, he's already right here. He's got a little box right in between the two inequalities. Giving you a hint, Shannon. Put, we did decide if it's an and or or. How do I know? How do I figure that out, Shannon? Um, find sign. Go back to the original sign. This sign right here. Sorry, Mr. Hager. <coughs> that sign right there. Um, Ariel, what does that sign say? That sign says greater than or equal to. What does that translate to? Or what kind of a problem is that when I'm doing these type of problems, when I'm doing these? It's either greater than or equal to Okay, is it, I want to know if it's an and or an or. And, right? Is it an and or an or? Is this, this, is, it, is this a greater than sign or a less than sign? So think, great or, or. or right? This is going to be an or. Remember, go back to the, go back to the original sign, right? and that's going to tell you what it is. If it's greater, it's or. If it's less than, it's and. Now we can solve. Now we can solve it. So this one over here. Um, Antonio, for this one right here, what's the first thing I want to do? Uh, get through the 3x. I can't do that. I got to get, get that negative 3x isolated first. It's going to be by itself oh, first. Um, add 5 on both sides. Careful, it's a positive. 
Minus five. Minus five. Remember, the sign to the left goes with it. All right. This negative. This negative is attached to the negative three x. Right. So I want a minus five. Minus five. Oh. Negative three x. Oh. All right. Um, Emily, what am I going to do now? Um, divide the negative three on both sides. Divide my negative three on both sides. I stop. I stopped. I I like I like what Emily said. Divide by negative three. I like that. I crossed it out. That leaves me with x. I got x by itself. Very very good. Why did I stop writing, Jordy? Why? Because you're dividing. By, by a negative. negative, right? When I divide by a negative, I got to flip the sign. So my little arrow should point at my x now. Now four. Divided by negative three, I can't do that. It doesn't go in evenly. So we'll just leave, we'll just, admit Mr. A is, no is going to make it a decimal because we can graph that. He gets negative 1.3. Most of the time, guys, you're going to get a whole number when you do these, but every once in a while, you might get a decimal. All right, next one. The other inequality we have in this problem. Same exact steps. All right, I'm still going to minus 5. I'm still going to minus 5. The answer is The answer will be different, right? I got two negatives. I'm going to keep the sign and add the numbers together. And I'll get 14. One more step, same as over there. Divide by negative 3. Just like I did over there when I divided by negative 3, that will flip my sign. So I might, do, I might do a double flip here. I flipped it at the beginning, and then so I divided by a negative, I got to flip it again. All right, so it's going to end up pointing the other way. And then Mr. Higgs is going to do that in his calculator. You're going too fast. 4.6. And again, two, because I'm dividing a negative, divided by a negative, that's why I get a positive. I'll give you guys a second to get caught up, and I'll still, I'll still copy in that. What is if I just copy the other side? <coughs> Sorry, I'm mistaken. You need to have both things. Jordy, you need to have both things. Okay? Uh -huh. You need to have both. Okay. Both um, inequalities. Mr. Hager's number, number in the line for us. <coughs> All right. Oh, my God. We don't even have numbers. Let's add them on there. On the test, you probably will. You should. <coughs> All right, so our number line is now has numbers on it. What's the first thing I should do, Jordy? Anybody think they might know what we need to do? We're gonna we're gonna graph we're gonna graph the same exact way we did yesterday. Wait, Emily. Um, put the dots on where the numbers. Right, be be specific with your dots. The, <coughs> the open or closed. All right. One. So let's look at this one. The closed. Dot. Closed at where? It would go like in between the negative one. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be closer to the negative one or closer to the zero. Uh, closer to the 
I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go closer to the zero. So that one oh, yeah. one point five will kind of be in between. So I'm gonna kind of go. If you're kind of in this general area, guys, that's fine. So I'm gonna put. Yeah. Yeah. So you to the left. Yeah. So we'll kind of be right. We'll put, a, we'll put a closed dot right there. Now, which way, Emily, should my line go? <coughs> to the right or to the left? To the right. Right? This figure this as your guide, right? This is like that's like your roadmap saying that you're going left. So what I do sometimes, guys, is before I graph it, I just put a little I just put a little dot, I put a little arrow on the top to remind myself which direction it's gonna go. Just in case does it just in case I have a different situation than I normally have. Alright? So I put a little arrow on the top to remind myself. Alright, how would I graph the how would I graph the other one? What do you think, Derek? How would I graph this one? Where would that be? Like right between the four and five. Yeah, I'll go, a I'll go a little bit more than halfway. Yeah. Right here. Okay. My arrow is going to go what direction? Zero. My line. To the right. Yep, there's my arrow head going this way, going right. Yeah. Again, they're not going the same, because sometimes you might get a situation where they go in the same direction. That's a whole different thing. But <coughs> for this case, we're fine. This line's going to go this way. This line's going to go this way. And that's it, I'm done. It's an or, it doesn't matter. Graph everything. If it doesn't work out, if they don't have, only for an and, we're looking for an overlap. All right, for an or, again, I could pick, I could pick a number from this range, a number from negative 3.1 and up. I could pick negative 1,263. It would work. If I put it in, it would be true for one of these statements. I could pick a number from 4.7 and up, and it would work for one of these situa for one of these inequalities. For an or, only one number from the <coughs> either range will work. Right? It only has to fit one of them. It doesn't have to work for both. For an and, it has to work for both. Like say if I picked, if I go back up and I picked, someone give me a number. Again, don't make it a decimal, but a number from Ooh. this range. Jordy. Five. Negative five. Negative five. Alright. So I'm gonna put I wanna plug in negative five for, I wanna plug in negative five for X. So I negative five. And I got negative five. So this says negative five is less than 1.3. Is that true? Is negative 5 less than or equal to 1.3? Yeah, great. It fits that criteria. So I know it's an or. It doesn't fit this criteria, which is fine. All right, this says negative 5 is greater than 4.7. It doesn't work. That's okay. I'm just trying to get you guys to understand. For an or, only a number from one of the ranges will work. I could pick something from over here, and it, only, it would only work for that, right, for that inequality. 1B. Let's look at it. Again, like we said, the first step is already done for you. We don't have to get the absolute value by itself. Every one we do today, we don't have to get the absolute value by itself. Um, Easily, so what am I going to do first? Separate it. Okay. I like it so far. Easily, so you got the easy one. They said to rewrite. They said to rewrite it with no absolute value bars. The first one's easy. Just rewrite it with no absolute value bars. Then this is where we get into the tricky stuff. The beginning. This is exactly the same. X minus 5, everything, everything before the sign is the same. So X minus 5, that stays exactly the same. That does not change. Maggie, what happens now? Good. Look back, that's fine. So 
flip the sign, right? So in the original problem, it's a, what kind of a sign is this value? Greater than, right? Now it's going to become? Less than, right? So instead of my arrow pointing at, see my arrowhead points to the 7, it's going to point at my x minus 5 now. I'm going to flip it. All right? What happens? Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Antonio? Uh, the 7 is negative. Make it a minus 7. Done. All right? Now, one more thing. Mr. Hager already got it ready. What are we going to decide now? Antonio? Um, whether it's and or or. What tells you that? Uh, if it's greater, uh, greater than. Or the original, the aside from the original problem, right? What kind of sign is that? Uh, greater than. Greater, so what kind of problem is it going to be? Uh, it's going to be an or. Or. If it's greater, it's an or. Very good. Now. May. First step to solve. Add five, right? Add five to both. Add five. I can do the same thing over here too. I can add. If I know the first step over here, I mean, you might want to, if you feel comfortable, go over and take care of it on the other side too. Just so you know. Then, then you can solve this one and come back to that one after. So this cancels out. This will give me x. Nothing happens with the sign. When's the only time? I'll, when's the only time I'll flip the sign? Someone tell me. Bye. Divide by a negative. I'm not dividing by a negative here. I'm adding 5. doesn't matter. Keep the sign. 7 plus 5? 12. Good. Bring my or down. Bring my or right down. Same thing here. Those guys cancel out. X is still here. Nothing happens with the sign. Just the math is a little bit different. For that negative 7 plus 5. Is my answer going to be positive or negative? What do you think? Why negative, Nini? Don't know. You spell it saying negative. Don't know. Josh? Seven. All right. Seven's bigger than five, and seven has a negative sign. Take the sign of the larger number. Then you just read it. Then read it from the bigger number to the smaller number. Seven minus five is what? Two. Perfect. I got my or. Jordy, what's the first thing I gotta do? Um, I don't know. Don't know. Okay. Oh, wait, oh, wait. oh, he does know. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> wait. I'm <laughs> we'll going back and forth here. Good. Oh, did it graph it? Graph it, yeah. That's what I'm asking. Oh, um. Go to the um, positive 12. Yeah. It's going to be an open circle. Okay, so he's doing that. There's one for you. Good. Which way did my line go, Jordy? To the left or to the right? To the right. How do you know? Because the arrow. Look at the arrow. I'm not going to screw it up. I'm not, not going to do that. We, just know, we know we're going to. I just want to. We'll go that way. I don't know if that's going to change that. So we're going to the right. Now, um, side. Can you tell me, Jordy just told me how to graph this. Can you tell me how to graph that? You go to negative 2. Yeah. And then you do open Thank you. And then you graph this one. Thank you. Good. So I'm going to put my little arrow on top. It doesn't matter. I get the normal situation. It's an or. They're both pointing in opposite directions. Good. We're perfect. Remember, for an or, only one. You, this, this range, a number from this range will work for this. I'm sorry. A number from this range will work for this. It won't work for this. A number from this range will work for this. It won't work for that. That's fine. Only one, only, only, have to, only one of the answers has to work. doesn't have to work for both. All right? So we just did two ors. I think personally <coughs> the ors are easier. I say that because the graphing doesn't matter. It's going opposite directions. All right? Let's look at this one. So, guys, let me give you, I want to give you like a minute. All right? I want to give you a, no. No. You can work with your imaginary friend, Pablo. Um, what I want you to do is take like 
a minute. And I want you to, what I want you to do is split it and also determine, <laughs> also determine what word will be in between the two inequalities. So take a minute and do that. I want you to split it, set up your two inequalities, and determine what number will go in between the two of them. All right, children. Wait. Question. Comment. Not for you. Question. Ooh. Not for you, Mr. Roy. As a matter of fact, Mr. Roy, fix the markers now. Yeah, I You accepted it? Okay. All right. Oh, Mr. Hager? Yeah. Should I start? I'm done. Like, check them or? Oh, uh. Sigh. 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 Sorry. Yes. Take one of those on the way up. All right, as I look, guys, I'm not gonna ask, I'm not gonna ask how you set it up. I'm just gonna go through. I'm gonna go through and show you. Again, the first one, exactly the same. Nothing changed. The only thing is, don't put your stuff away. Write this down if you got it wrong. Listen to me. When we're done this, I'll give you time to put your stuff away. Pay attention right now. All right. So we got this, exactly the same, no absolute value. Over here, people did this very well. They wrote what was before, they flipped the sign, I'm sorry, they flipped the number afterwards, they made it negative. There will be no marksmanship today after school, the cap will be closed. Okay, so people did very well with this, they made the sign after it negative, did that well. Some people forgot to flip the sign. See how the arrow's pointing to the 2w minus 1? When I flip it, it's going to point towards the negative 11 now. All right? As far as the math goes, I'm going to add one to both sides. I'm going to add one. That'll cancel it out. Divide by 2, divide by 2. w less than 6. Over here, same, same exact step that I did here will happen here. Plus 1. Plus 1, 2w greater than negative 10. Divide by 2, divide by 2, w greater than negative 5. Negative divided by a positive is a negative. One thing I forgot to do. What was that one thing I forgot to do? Someone tell me. Flip the sign. No. Right? It's going to be, uh, is it a, look at the original sign. Is this a less than or a greater than? Is this a less than or a greater than? Less, less than. So what word separates? And. It's an and, right? Now remember, I only, want the, I only want the overlap. Open dot at 6. My arrow will go this way. For this, open dot at 5, kind of right here. And I'm going to go this way. Remember, what's an and? I just want to connect the dots. Numbers from this range. If I plug it in, if I plug a number from that range in for W, it'll sat, it'll work for both things. It'll be true for both statements. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so guys, no more tonight. Uh, just do the first five. Right now, guys, when I give it to you, before you put it away, put a line through six. I'm going to give it to you face down. Put a line through six. Okay. 